Cam A, the soap of beautiful women, presents the 1951 TV Dial award-winning drama, The Storm. This is the storm that sends rain to sting man's cheek as a reminder that nature is impatient for the storms he creates in his mind, his petty battles on the earth. Today, we find men at war fighting for life that they see others lose so easily. In the service of their country, they often find no gods to serve. Razor Red, this is Razor Blue. Razor Red, this is Razor Blue. Do you hear me? Razor Red, this is Razor Blue. Am I coming through? Razor Red, this is Razor Blue. Razor Red, this is Razor Blue. Over. Kosher. All right. What time is it? What's the matter? You got a date? No. Just thinking. Privates don't have to think. That's what they pay sergeants for. It's 2 a.m. on the button and all's well. All's well. Oh, we're lucky we are. Five guys against the whole Chinese army. Yeah, and we're lost besides. You ain't kidding. Boy, if we ever get out of this alive, I'm... Hey, why don't you guys trade in your heads? So we get cut off, we wind up in the cellar. You know what's happening out there? We're taking a lick. Guys we know by their first names are walking around with fingers and toes turning black. And if they ain't freezing to death, they're getting mowed down before they get a chance to ask why. Would you rather be out there? You're still breathing, ain't you? You don't have to gargle to see whether or not your throat's cut. You're out of the cold, and for the time being, you can relax. Now, quit griping and shut up. The sergeant's out looking for the CP. Maybe he'll get us hooked up with the company again. We didn't mean nothing, Corsi. No, I guess we ain't used to this. And get used to it. For the six, eight hours, you might look back at this cellar as a two weeks vacation with pay. Then you might sell your soul for just 15 minutes of shut-eye. Believe me, I know it happens that way. Seems funny. A week ago, we was on a ship heading in here. Yeah. You been here long, Kosher? It's last June. It was the first troops in. Rough, huh? You no know, rougher than now. Had the gooks to fight, but no Chinese. They ought to be letting you go home pretty soon. I'm too valuable a man. I know, I got a pipeline in the G2. Corporal Morris Golden is to be left in the line till the last day. Is that your first name, Morris? He was expecting Patrick? We never heard you called that before. All the guys, all the guys called you kosher. I'm scared, kosher, I'm scared. Look, kid, you're in good company. At least a lot of company. We're all scared. Being scared is part of wearing a uniform. Just don't give in to it, that's all. But you said we was getting licked. We are. But just because a couple of million laundry men got a mad on us, no reason we gotta roll over and die. We get our licks in. It just happens to be there any. Now come on, relax, try to get some sleep. Pete's up there on guard. Anybody gets near, he'll let us know. Sergeant's been gone over an hour. You don't suppose anything can happen? Take care of himself. Probably out nosing around someplace. Part Beagle anyway. Hey, who do you think? I don't know. Get ready to dodge the lens. Relax, you guys. It's me. Here, give me a hand. Take my feet. What's the matter, Pete? Here, grab hold of it. What's your problem? 
find him. I thought I saw something moving down by the road. I went over for a look, see him. There's a cheap turnover. I was dead. This guy's ran a few feet away. He caught a slug in his shoulder. Slug's gone. Just a flesh job. Looks like he lost a lot of blood, though. Chaplain? I didn't know that. Some war. Now the ministers are getting it. Get your packs on. We're moving out. Did you find the company, Sarge? Yeah, are they okay? I found them. First two platoons in part R's got trapped in a draw. Three guys cut off. Three guys? Three. Three men out of 150. Yes, Long. I found the company. 147 corpses face down in the snow. I met Reardon from B Company. Me and four others, the rear guard for the column. The whole division, what's left of them, have moved south. Where we are is a mile and a half inside enemy lines. This place ought to be swarming with them. We ought to be able to make it if we move out in the double. Come on, let's get the show on the... <laughs> Where'd he come from? I found him up on the road. Caught a slug in his shoulder. He'll pull through, but he won't be doing any walking. Not for at least 24 hours. Not if he wants to live. Couldn't walk five feet with him. Not if he wants to live. That's the trouble with people. They want to live. I'll stick with him. We all will. Tomorrow night we'll move out. Sorry, you said they'd be swarming around here. Like bees, kid, and this was honey. We got to get out of here. You can leave. I'll write you out a three-day pass. But he's only one man. There, there's five of us. And when you leave, it'll be four. I never left a man wearing the same uniform I had. I never left him holding a bag, and I'm not going to now. You'll be stronger tomorrow. How about the rest of you guys? I'm not holding anybody. If you want to strike out by yourselves, that's your business, and good luck. If you want to stick, sit down and breathe through your nose. Chaplain, huh? I think maybe we're going to need a chaplain. But I want this understood. Nobody tells the Padre here what's what. We're leaving tomorrow night, and that's according to plan. Is that understood? But we are, Sarge. We can't go because of the wound issue. Because nothing. As far as the Padre's concerned, tomorrow night's D-Day. The night never was. The guy can feel awful sick in his gut if he thinks he's in danger in the lives of five other guys. I don't want him thinking that. Yeah, but... He ever thought that come on, have... come on, speak up, soldier. You got something to say, spit it out. Don't hold it in your mouth like it was too nasty to put in the air. Nothing. All right. Keep one man on top all night. What's left of it? One hour on, mm. two off. Same schedule down here looking after Chappie. Mm. Looks like he's snapping out of it. Let's get him up. How you feeling, chap? Where to... Where to get hit? In the shoulder, just a flesh wound. You're gonna be okay, just relax. My driver. How about his driver? Dead? Yeah. Yeah, it was dead when I found him, Chappie. Nineteen years old. Just came over with Both rookies. Relax. You're safe now. Tomorrow night, we're going to move out back to the... back to the unit. We're trapped up here, aren't we? I wouldn't say trapped, Chappie. This kind of overextended our lines a little bit. When we go to sleep, we're gonna have quite a hike tomorrow. He's a little old for this sort of thing. Must be running out of young men back there. Was due for a stint up top. 
That's you, Sloan. You relieve me. And be quiet up there. You never know who might be looking through our window at you. Sarge, I think the kid's had enough. One of us can take Get up it there, Sloan. You won't need that, just your piece. cracking up. I could have taken his guard for him. You're too sweet, dearie. Listen. You listen. I got a five lives riding on these plus my own. A couple of miles inside enemy territory with a half million chinks probably getting close enough to us to spit. Now you're telling me I got to start shedding tears because one of my soldiers happens to be a teenager with too much imagination. You don't have to shed nothing except that alligator hide of yours. I'm willing to let the kid ride a while. If you want to stick it to him and have a crying half crazy baby on your hands by morning, that's your business. Teenager or no teenager, he's another man. We're going to need him sane. Do me a favor, Kosher. Blow you it. You too. Hey! Oh, come on! If you don't stand the chance of a nursery against Notre Dame. That's what I figured. What's the plan? One sentence. Run like hell south. If we're lucky we might make an arm some smaller port town. Our boys ought to be digging in someplace back there. They can't run forever. And it's tough swimming in the winter, but... But... Six men trying to go off tackle when there's 500,000 opponents plugging the hole. When Chappie feels better, we might start figuring out prayer services. Sarge! Sarge! Kosher! Come here! I thought he saw a tank. A tank? It was a tree. Why, that's stupid. It's dark. You can change a lot of things if you're scared and it's dark. Wake me in an hour, will you? Sure. I want your rigs. Oh, he's such a funny man. They were a dull moment, huh? I'm all right now. Thanks. Here. Thanks. No fun, is it? War never is. You in the last one? I was too young. But not for this one. That's the helpful thing about our society. Boys too young for one war. There'll always be another one the next generation. What chance do we have? Getting out of here alive, I mean. I don't know. You never know. With luck, we might go 100 miles, never be seen. Without luck? You ask it, Padre, you answer. You believe in God, son? I need to. But you need to. When you have something to pray for, you pray. Look, chap, you're going to need this strength. So are you. So are all of us. This is the bottom of the barrel, isn't it? It's where we can't depend on just rifles, grenades, good luck. <laughs> you know, I think the good Lord sent me down here on purpose. It's where a little faith and belief comes in. 
the world's one sin, its babes grow dull. Its poor ox-like, limp and leaden-eyed. Not that they starve, but starve so dreamlessly. Not that they sow, but that they seldom reap. Not that they serve, but that they have no gods to serve. Not that they die, but that they die like sheep. Good. That's from a poem by Rachel Lindsay called The Leaden Eyed. I don't understand poetry, that kind of stuff. My old lady used to read to me out of the Talmud. That's her holy book. She said I should be a rabbi. I told her when the old man went to work, I'd be a rabbi. So I'm in the army. <laughs> 